Okay, in this video, we're going to um, discuss how the uh, laser and the laser driver are uh, positioned. Uh, for ease of use, I think that you'll find that if you position your laser driver perpendicular, you'll have um, easy access to all the controls that you need to um, manipulate. If you uh, take that driver and attach it horizontally, you may find that uh, those controls are extremely difficult to get to. So as you can see by this uh, first photo here, I have the driver um, with one side facing towards me, and that has most of the controls on it that I need to get to. Um, and then of course the laser is down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna ask you to please excuse the um, lack of uh, control of the wires there. You'll notice I only have two bolts um, in the mount right now because I'm not really sure this is where I'm gonna leave everything. I think it is, but I'm not really sure at this time. And I'm gonna wait until I make it more permanent before I put in the other two uh, mounting bolts and then have my wire, um, my, uh, my wire management. Here's a, um, here's a picture of that laser driver with all the connections made. You'll see starting at the top, you have your laser out cable uh, directly below that would be uh, the same thing, the laser out cable, if you were not using a Molex connector. Um, also, this is important. You see I have a, a minus and a plus right there under that L on the word laser. Um, that's where you would put your probes in your for, if you're using your multimeter or when you use your multimeter to tune your laser through your driver there. Um, you'd put the uh, ground on the uh, top um, connector and your uh, positive on the bottom connector. And then of course, uh, check th your um, voltage, or I'm sorry, your um, current through your multimeter to ensure that you don't um, overburn that, uh, don't, don't overburn that laser. Um, the next connector is the, uh, are the inputs from the breakout board. Um, again, there's a place there for a Molex connector. If you have one, I just have bare wires. So they go into the, little screw connectors there, that green area. Um, the uh, black wire I have running to the ground on my breakout board, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, the red wire I have going to pin 17 on my breakout board, uh, that's where they go on that laser driver. That little blue box with the screw in it, that's the uh, current adjustment, uh, the potentiometer, uh, if you will. That's where you will take a very small, very fine screwdriver and um, turn that screw to the right or to the left to adjust that current. And of course, using your multimeter, you'll see what the, um, the adjustments result in. Uh, you have a power cable that comes in and connects um, uh, from the 12 volt power supply. Then you have two smaller connections and these are actually options that you can get with the laser driver. Um, I elected to get those. One, the top one is the additional fan that um, rests on top of the laser so it keeps it cool and also blows smoke out of the way. Um, and also the uh, reset switch, you'll see that reset switch there to the left in the background, that red button. Instead of reaching around on the other side of the laser driver to press the reset switch when I need to, I can just click that red button. Here's that uh, breakout board and you can see the red wire goes in the pin number 17. Although from this angle, it doesn't look like it's um, hitting pin 17, but it is if you count those uh, silver headed uh, screws, uh, one, two, three, four, five from the bottom, you'll see that's number 17. And then your uh, ground, your black wire, um, goes into the screw there just adjacent to the letter S. Here's the uh, other side of that laser driver board. It starts at the bottom. Now going from bottom to top, you have the on-off on uh, rocker switch. You have the safety switch, the key switch in which the um, key fits and uh, to turn the laser on. Um, you have uh, the reset button uh, right there, that little red button on the uh, right hand side. If you don't use the uh, reset switch cable as an option, then you have to reach around and hit that tiny little button every time that you need to hit the reset switch and you will. Um, the CW switch is next. Um, and then you have indicator lights that I can't see from my operator side, but I really, um, I don't find that totally necessary, although it's a good safety feature. Um, I don't use those indicator lights, although if you wanted to um, hook up some type of a device that would um, uh, help 
uh, see those indicator uh, lights, uh, that would certainly be a benefit. Um, this picture I threw in as uh, to show two things. First of all, you can see the uh, plastic spacers, uh, nylon spacers that I use to um, have the both the driver board and the laser protrude uh, somewhat from the from the mount. Uh, I just think that will give it more uh, more room for air to circulate, and it also makes it a little bit easier to get to, so it's not flush right up against that mount. So, so there are those nylon spacers that I use with the number six screws. Um, you can see the laser fan on top that comes as an option. I think it's, I don't know, $10, $12, whatever it is. It's certainly worth the uh, money to have that fan on top of that laser because it keeps it cool and it does blow the, um, blows the smoke away from the, uh, from the laser lens. And uh, lastly, what I wanted to show on this picture was uh, before in one of my previous videos, I talked about the laser lens being slightly recessed from the bottom of that mount and I think this picture shows you that so again just a safety feature in the event that that um, z-axis bottoms out I'm not going to get my laser lens crushed and the final picture here in this video is a um, just to show you how I use a spacer I've got some uh, a scrap piece of uh, glued together three-quarter inch plywood so that gives me roughly an inch and a half that I can use as a spacer between the laser lens and the material that I'm going to burn. That way I don't have to keep refocusing my laser each time. Once I focus it at that inch and a half distance, then all I have to do is slip that, um, that little uh, um, double piece of plywood between my material and the lens and then just very, very cautiously and very slowly uh, screw down that lead screw until I get that laser lens just barely off the top of that, of that um, double piece of plywood. And then that works real good. That keeps that uh, beam focused right there at an inch and a half uh, continuously. And that just about wraps up this video. Um, I'm going to uh, lead into another video now that's going to actually have uh, some burning going on. So I think you'll find that interesting next. Thanks.